morning, everyone. Good to see you again on this first weekend in August. Uh, word about the service today. Um, my wife and I had made plans over a month ago to be gone this, this last week up to Mount Shasta, where we go every uh, summer to vacation. And uh, so anticipation of me being away all this week, um, reached out to a sister church in Summerland. And Bart and David are uh, colleagues there and reached out, hey, which one of you guys want to share a recent sermon with the St. Andrews community? And they said, sure. And then uh, David got back to me a little bit after that and said he'd just done a sermon recently on the Holy Spirit and about experiencing the Holy Spirit, how we can do that. And I said, sounds great. So David will bring, be bringing you the, the sermon today and the benediction. Another note, sharing in the communion service today, which is at the last part of our service, is Janet Ewart, a, a wonderful part of the St. Andrews community. And um, Janet and I have been in touch this week. And uh, she said she just discovered a couple weeks ago that she had actually been serving at a church up in the Bay Area, up in San Carlos, and knew David's parents years ago, and was actually present at his baby shower as he was emerging into this world. So we have a wonderful kind of both a church and a family connection with Janet and I sharing this service with David. So I um, hope it's meaningful to you. I hope it blesses you. And uh, in light of David's theme today of experience the, whole, um, the Holy Spirit, let's begin with that wonderful praise song written by Randy Scruggs about um, the, the, the prayer and, and, and the intent that we bring to the service of making ourselves a sanctuary, a personal sanctuary for the presence of God. Let's sing. Everybody, good to see you. Here's my friend, Disciple Dog. He's not inside his house today. The reason why is that sometimes I found he loves to sleep. I love to sleep and take naps and everything else. But beyond sleeping, he likes to sometimes just sit at the corner of his dog house and look out from his door and kind of see what's going on and be open and just watch. And I'll come out to him and I'll say, hey, I'll say, I'm gonna go read about God, and he'll think that's fine. And I'll come out after a while, and he's just still just watching things, looking at something up in the tree. And then I'll come back and say, I'm gonna go listen to some music that's inspiring. And he thinks that's fine. And I'll come back out, and he just may have seen something, and I'll look at it, and I go, oh, wow, that's beautiful. I'm gonna go watch a movie that I think is really inspiring and he'll think that's fine. And I'll come out a little while later, and he'll just be looking at something else that he hasn't seen before. And I'll look at it and go, wow, I didn't see that flower come up the other day. What I've learned is sometimes I go chasing around to try to learn or experience God. And if I come out sometimes and just sit and try to do the things he's doing and just say, God, show me what's happening. Speak to me if you'd like to. It feels like I get closer to God sometimes than by doing everything else. Once again, thank you for being my spiritual guide. Let's pray. God, help us sometimes to just take the time to go out, sit, and be open to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm guessing you don't want to say goodbye today. Okay, I'm just going to sit here with you too. Sit here on quiet. See you soon.
Hello, St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. My name is David Muscofian Caker, and I am one of the pastors down here at Summerlin Presbyterian Church. I'm glad to meet you. Steve Jacobson called and asked if he could use one of our videos for your video this week. Yes, we have been in a series on the Holy Spirit, what it's like to experience the Holy Spirit and uh, live closer to the Spirit of God. So the sermon that you're going to see later in this video is the sermon that was from the end of that series on experiencing the Holy Spirit. And I invite you all to enter into this sacred space and enter into the sacred time of breathing in and breathing out and centering yourself in the fact that God's love is coming straight towards you right now and opening your hearts to what God has ahead for you during this time. Our prayer is that these videos give you tools to thrive spiritually during this incredibly challenging time of experiencing this global pandemic. So I will pray for you as we head in, and then you'll experience this sermon. Lord, as we head into this time, guide our hearts, open them, give us real experiences of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We're continuing our talks on the Holy Spirit. It's been so fun digging into references to the Spirit throughout Scripture. Specifically, Bart and I have been looking at every single reference to the Holy Spirit in the New Testament and pulling the Scripture passages for our sermon out of those spaces, specifically the Gospels and Acts. But one thing I did for fun, I was like, well, what's the very first reference to Spirit in the Bible? And what's the very last reference to spirit in the Bible. The very first ref reference is on the first page. It's Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, when the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. That's how we're introduced to the Holy Spirit. And then the very last reference is on the last page of Scripture. It's the last chapter of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. So in Revelation chapter 22, we get these words about the Holy Spirit that we're going to take some time to study today. So this is the Scriptures from Revelation 22, and we're starting in verse 17. And this is a beautiful invitation. It's an invitation to all, and it's spoken by the Spirit and by a crowd of voices. So I invite you to hear these words with the power of the Holy Spirit and the resonance of thousands upon thousands of crowded ones inviting you to come. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, let everyone who hears also say, Come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. This is the invitation to you and to me and to everyone who hears the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. As I've been praying through these words, I've sat back and I've closed my eyes and I've let them repeat over my heart this phrase, the Spirit and the Bride say, come. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. So what does that mean for you and for me? The Spirit and the Bride are inviting us to come. What is our RSVP? What is our RSVP to this invitation to come? My hope is that during this talk, we'll talk about engaging in spiritual practices which help us answer that invitation from the Spirit to come. When I was in my 20s, I uh, lived off the grid. I lived in a yurt, which is a round Mongolian hut with solar power and no phone. The closest phone that rang near me was about a quarter mile away. I had an outdoor shower and sink. I uh, ate my meals uh, from an outdoor kitchen out on the deck of a small pond or on the deck of my yurt, and I loved it. I lived out there because I was uh, teaching outdoor education to fifth and sixth grade students who would come for a week of their 
classroom year. Maybe you're familiar with science camp or something along those lines. I was a teacher for five years at a science camp, and I loved every second of it. And my pedagogy or my approach to teaching during that time was simple. It's experiential education. Inviting kids out into the forest to learn about how ecologies and ecosystems work just turns on the faucet of learning and they're sponges and they get to soak it up simply because they're experiencing it. Standing at the, the shore of a creek and skipping rocks and talking about how watersheds work makes a lot more sense than trying to stand in a classroom and, and using a dry erase board to try and explain how watersheds work. So as a teacher, I care passionately about just the power of experiential education and letting experience be our teacher. So here we are engaged in a series of talks where we are talking about the power and the love and the guidance and the universality and the particularity and the care and the comfort and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And yet what I really want is for the Holy Spirit to be our teacher in these places. What I really want is for experience to educate us in these areas. What I really want is for you and for me to simply experience more of the teaching and the leadership of the Holy Spirit in our own lives. So my hope for this talk is that it will invite us into a deeper practice of experiences where we get to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit deeper into our spiritual journeys. So when I was teaching and living off the grid out there in the redwoods north of here in the Santa Cruz Mountains area of California, one of the first things that I learned about how to learn more about nature was to engage in a practice that's really simple. It's called a sit spot. And a lot of those in nature education use this tool as a way to learn from the surroundings around us. And in my heart, it's so simple to see how this practice that I learned sitting in the redwood forest can be applied to all of us who are seeking to grow deeper spiritually no matter where we are whether we're in a beautiful, pristine environment or we have access to that, whether we're near the beach or in the mountains or whether we're in an urban context, we're in an apartment or uh, you can be in a busy place. I've practiced this type of thing in a car, in a parking lot, uh, in a strip mall. So there are plenty of ways that this can be practiced and my hope is that it's an offering. It's uh, something that helps us all grow closer to experiencing the love of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. So here's what a sit spot is. This is what I learned. You go and you pick a spot and there you sit and observe. And the first step in learning from experiential education is the step of becoming aware of what's all around us. Awareness allows us to see what previously we weren't seeing. It allows us to hear what we previously weren't hearing. And in that, it cultivates our hearts. So as I've prayed before and I pray now, that God will use us in this world to be a part of God's love and shalom. And the way that we'll engage in that is to give us eyes to see what God sees and ears to hear what God hears and hearts that love what God loves. And the first step in that is awareness. So when I was sitting in the Redwoods, I actually had a spot. And uh, some folks said, well, how do you pick a spot? And a, a great place to pick a spot is one that's on a boundary of habitats. So if you can sit right where a field comes into a forest or right where a stream comes to a bank of a river, somewhere like that, you'll actually see the habitats from two different systems interacting and you'll get to see more. So for those of us translating this into a spiritual practice, if you're gonna pick a spot, pick a spot that's on a threshold. Pick a spot that is an opportunity to see two different spaces at one time. We ground this in scripture. We talk about the story that shaped a nation, the story that shaped the people of Israel being the Exodus. They were slaves in Egypt and then they go through this wilderness journey before they arrive at the promised land. And that entire wilderness journey, that entire Exodus is a space that shaped the nation. And it was a doorway, it was a threshold, it was a liminal space between the two spaces, between slavery and between the promised land, was this space in between. So if we can identify our spiritual practice to be one that allows us to sit present 
in those spaces where we are in between things, that will allow us to see the faithfulness of God drawing us out of bondage and into promise and the entire journey, the harvest of lessons to be learned along the way. So I, I specifically picked a spot in the Redwoods. And for you to engage a spiritual practice of asking to be more aware of God's presence in your life, I would invite you to pick a spot. Pick a spot that allows you to see the breadth of God's work, but pick a spot that's convenient. Pick a spot that's easy to get to. We don't want to set this bar high so that you don't actually go to your sit spot. So you can pick a spot that's a comfy couch, comfy chair in your space. Um, you can pick a spot that's outside but close by, one you can get to easily if you have a porch somewhere like that or a park, just something very close and very convenient. But it's a spot that becomes a space for you where you can become aware of God's presence. Oftentimes we'll use a word for this. We call them thin spaces. Thin spaces are spaces where we feel a connection to God's divine presence in our lives right now. It's a space where that, that curtain or that veil that's between us and eternity gets dipped down just a little bit and we get to peek over the edge of that thin veil and encounter God in a thin space. So find your space that has a thinness and a way that you can connect. As we pick a spot to then become aware what do we do once we're there? Well, what we do once we're there is we try and settle into our senses. How are you hearing from God? Like I prayed that we would have eyes to see what God sees and ears to hear what God hears, to cultivate our hearts into loving what God loves. Coming into that space invites us to wake up, wake up our spiritual senses and to listen with that deeper sensitivity. Uh, one practice I used to do that was a lot of fun in my sit spot that I would invite you to do in a very real way in a spiritual sense is to create what we call a sound map. I would take a blank piece of paper. All my papers have notes on them here. But I'd take a blank piece of paper and I'd put a, a spot where I was in the middle with an X. And then every time I heard a sound, so a bird or a branch or a leaf or something, um, I would just make another little X and I'd call it my sound map. I wouldn't try to figure out what they were, all were. I was just becoming aware of the sound that was around me. I could use that map later to try to figure things out, but I would invite you to bring a journal or a piece of paper into your sit spot, your sacred spot. Put a little spot where you are in the middle and turn your ears towards the Holy Spirit's work all around you. And as you start hearing God's voice and start hearing these words, I invite you just to put an X on that page and it can actually represent space around you, how you are hearing God. You can make a quick note or two, but it's not something to study in that time. It's something to study later. It's just something to experience. God, how am I hearing your voice? And you can make note of that in your sound map. A good question to pause and ask in these moments is what do you do with distractions? because these always come up. For all of us who are uh, entering into contempl contemplative practices, in including listening and a sacred listening, that's when we realize how much noise is just going on inside our brains. Bart and I have said before, sometimes it can feel just like a circus in there. The moment we take to quiet down is the moment we realize just how much noise is being made. So what do you do with those thoughts? You acknowledge them, you say, I see you, and I let you go. We'll talk about those things later, you can tell those thoughts. I'll listen to those later. So as you let those thoughts pop up, acknowledge them and release them and let them go. You can just let them go down the stream that might be in your mind and just say, I'll let you ride on out of here right now because they will come up. But they're not something to just be hurried away or swept under the rug. You can even invite God to show you what you have to learn from those voices. So this is an opportunity to enter into that contemplative space, to wake up, to become aware, and to cultivate hearing God's voice. And in the midst of that, there are going to be some essential reflections. One of them is that in this space, have fun. 
This isn't something that's supposed to be a burden or a drudgery or something. Oh, now I've got to go to that sacred space in a way to become more aware of God's work in my life. No, this is an opportunity to have fun. So that's how I look forward to it. And make it easy. Make it low pressure. Just let that on-ramp be so simple that you can practice it simply and regularly. Right now, Joy and I don't have a lot of time. We have our five-year-old and our two-year-old whom we love deeply, and we're not trying to pursue Jesus in spite of them. We're trying to pursue Jesus in the midst of them. And that's how all of our lives are. We are embodied humans and practicing a deepening spirituality in the midst of our context and where God has us right now in the midst of the friendships that you have, in the midst of being parents, in the midst of being kids, in the midst of being uh, partnered up with someone, in the midst of what you have around you in those relationships, that is the space where we are called to continue to pursue God. So that's why we make this sit spot practice simple. Just make it simple. And the point is to practice awareness and observation. And finally, to move at the speed of love. That's a quote that uh, Bart came back from his pilgrimage journey on the Camino de Santiago with. Moving at the speed of love is moving at the speed with which God loves us. And we love God back. And we love our neighbors around us. And the speed of love is exactly the speed it needs to be. It's not something that I can put a number on. It's something that we just say, okay, God, I invite you to call me forward in the speed of love. And as you are practicing this, and I invite you to practice this three times this upcoming week and the week after that, to grow in your deepening sense of awareness of the Holy Spirit around you, you will go through stages of experiencing this. There's a stage of orientation or acclimation, and you're getting used to it. You're saying, okay, this is what it's like to sit in this space and invite God's presence to teach me. There will be another stage of deepening curiosity. You're like, well, what am I going to hear today? And when something's fresh and it's starting, uh, there is that curious sense and press into that. And there's a third stage that I've experienced, and it's the embracing stage. It's the stage where that we get to embrace what this practice is like. Now, there are so many of us who are practicing spiritual awareness and engaging the Holy Spirit into our lives. And I don't want this practice to be um, something for only people who have never started anything before. This is for all of us. And I invite all of us who are in practices that are deepening our awareness of the Holy Spirit to take on what works from these thoughts and these offerings, to incorporate that into your deepening spirituality. As I present myself in this space, where the spirit and the bride say come. For me, it's an emphasis on listening. I hear the spirit say, come and listen. David, come and listen. And there's an exchange of prayer. And there's a book that uh, Joy and I have both been reading. It came out last year. It's called How to Pray, and it's a simple guide for normal people. Uh, It's been really straightforward. It's by Pete Grieg. And... um, we found it rich. There's so many great instructions on how to pray. And there's, there's a whole chapter on listening that I've gotten a lot of fruit out of. It's on how to hear God. For those of you who are interested in deepening on how God speaks into our lives and how to hear God fully, I would invite you to pick up this book and at least look at that chapter. Uh, a handful of ways in which Pete emphasizes how we hear God are hearing God in the Bible hearing God in dreams and visions, hearing God in counsel and common sense, hearing God in personal reflection, and hearing God in action. So as we move into these spaces where we invite to hear more of God, we're not just doing that in a sit spot, um, but we are taking that into our whole lives and taking that into reading scriptures and action and dreams and vision and counsel and talking with others. So as you enter into more sacred practices that you invite to be your teacher, As we respond to this invitation for the Spirit to say, come, you will join your voice with everyone who hears. We are then saying, come, and everyone who is thirsty, come, and anyone who wishes, take the water of life as a gift. Our hope is that the Holy Spirit is your greatest teacher in these series of talks on the Holy Spirit, and you will live abundantly connected to the one who gives life, who gives the water of life as a gift.
God bless you in these steps into deepening your love and your real experiences of the Holy Spirit. join me as we pray together. God of grace, we thank you for your spirit which draws us to you. We know that you are our companion in solitude. You are with us when we are afraid and weary, especially during these unsettling COVID-19 times. We miss being together and we give thanks for our caring St. Andrew's community who helps us stay connected in many ways. We know that your desire for us is to live in community, even as we are apart. We thank you that in these challenging times, our church family is also reaching out to our neighbors in love. Help us continue to be open to new and creative ways to serve. We ask that you would open our eyes and our hearts to recognize all people as your children. Give us courage and resolve to stand against the injustice of racism so we might live together with liberty and justice for all. We ask this morning, O oh God, that you would hear us as we bring to you the needs of our church family. Be with those who have received an unsettling diagnosis those who struggle with illness, those who feel the loss of a loved one intensified during this time. We ask you to comfort all who are hurting. We also remember and give you thanks for celebrations and joy during these times that bring delight to our hearts. We thank you that you are with us in all things. And now, O oh God, we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, even in the midst of our serious challenges, this is the joyful feast for the people of God. People will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. It is not the Presbyterian table. Neither is it the Lutheran table, the Baptist table, or the Methodist table. All are welcome here. Anyone who has been called by God is invited to come and put their trust in Christ. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them, just as we, ministering in his name, now give it to you. And when the disciples received it, their eyes were opened, and they recognized Jesus. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Give thanks, for God is good. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Everlasting God, we thank you for making us in your image. 
to live with each other in love and for the breath of life and the freedom to choose your way. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Your ways are just and truth. With people of faith from all times and places, we lift our hearts in joyful praise, for you alone are holy. Holy God, we thank you for your son Jesus, who lived with us sharing joy and sorrow. He told your story. He healed the sick and was a friend of sinners. He stood against the institutional powers and was killed because of his influence. We praise you that he is not dead, but is risen in our hearts and reigns there. We trust him to overcome every power that would hurt or divide us until the day that we meet him again in glory. Friends, as we celebrate the feast this morning, we do so in a unique and creative way. And I hope that you have bread. Um, whatever kind you have at home is just fine. Um, bread and wine to share. And um, we will be together even though we're in separate places. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks for it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said to his disciples, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, which is in my blood. Do it as often as you drink it, remembering me. I invite you now to partake of the bread. Take and eat. The cup of salvation. Let us pray. God, have you, you have fed us at your table. You have fed us with your word. You are present in your spirit. We pray that your vision for the world be our vision, your will be our will, and that together we go through this storm of the pandemic, trusting in you and doing what you would have us do. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
As our time in this video is coming to a close, I wanted to take a moment to offer a blessing. It's a blessing that God's people have heard throughout the generations and the centuries, and that as you go into the days ahead, you know that the Lord is blessing you, the Lord is keeping you, and the Lord is making his face to shine upon you and to give you peace. And I pray that you live equipped to experience the Spirit and live in the power of God's Spirit. Amen.